And now I'm going to be installing my heated bed. Um, you're going to need the springs. I'm not going to go through all the steps of applying the uh, heated bed part because that's already done in another video. Um, and this is also an AC bed, so maybe the wiring is going to be a little bit different than a DC bed, but uh, DC bed is going to be a lot simpler and more straightforward, so I won't get into that much either. But since this is a Kirigami bed, this is not stock, and before I install it, I'm going to want to make sure that this has, uh, I've got a little bit of access here for this guy. This is our little NeoPixel light. This is what makes everything light up on the bed, which is kind of cool. All these wires, I was running this before entirely through the cable chain, which is probably what you're going to want to do if you're not running Kirigami. You can see that there's these Wago clips. And these Wago clips here are what you're going to be clipping the bed wires in. And that allows you to, if you ever want to do maintenance, you can e pretty easily unclip your bed and remove it. Otherwise, um, you're going to have to flip the machine over, unplug things, run it through the cable chain. That can be a little bit of a pain. So even if you're not running a Kirigami bed, um, take a look at some of the Wago bed mods that are available. So with that in mind, I'm just going to go ahead and prepare this by putting the springs on the screws. This can be a little bit tricky, but you're going to need you're going to need your um, you're also going to need your screw with your lock nut on there. That can be fun. I will link um, how I do this in my original V0 uh, build video. It's pretty much the same process. There's nothing different here. So go ahead and hold these. And then um, for the wiring, I'm just going to run it through the center. I'm going to have, I'm going to be trimming that up in a minute. After you do that, you're just going to do your best to set it into the three holes in the bed and it should uh, if you're lucky it should fit right in and now the bed is uh, mounted there's some uh, some 3d printed parts that we have to put under here so we can adjust the bed and lock it in and here are the three pieces you're going to need you're also going to need three heat inserts and i'll do that in a second yeah i've got my soldering iron cranked up and i'm just going to go ahead and insert these in these and once those inserts are installed Go ahead and flip it upside down and you're going to install it so the hump is facing the bed and at this point you don't really need to worry about tightening it down too much i would just tighten it enough so it's held in place and we'll be and just repeat for all three now that i've got this positioned i can see where i need to trim my wires so i'm probably only going to need maybe about that much and i'm going to cut these and then i'm going to be wiring them into these wagos so if, if you're running the kirigami bed it's going to be a lot easier to crimp it when it's not mounted and i've just gone ahead and marked it with a piece of tape where i think i want to crimp it these two red ones are probably the ones i want to crimp there and then the jst which is uh the, the thermistor wire i can crimp a little shorter and now i'm just going to go ahead and cut all these wires this wire bundle where I marked it with the tape. So now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and put some ferrules on these. Uh, I've got these wire strippers. So the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to cut a little bit off the end like about that. And then I'm also going to strip the jacket off this because I need to put a JST on it. Yeah, I might need a little bit more than that just to be safe. I'm going to be using this kind of cheaper crimper for the ferrules. The ferrules allow you to get a nice connection into your Wago or any other, uh, like a screw terminal. You want to make sure you pick the right Wago for the wire size. These are pretty small wires. And these are, again, this is an AC bed, so yours may be thicker. That's pretty much all there is to it. You want to make sure it's nice and snug and isn't going to come off. If it does come off, you probably need a smaller uh, gauge ferrule. And now I'm going to go ahead and crimp a JST onto these. For the JST connection for the thermistor, I'm going to use these PA09 crimpers. And these are really good. I've, used, I've had these for probably seven or eight years. I've crimped a ton of stuff. I originally got them for a drone, multi-copter hobby. Just perfect for JSTs um, and, and even the microfit. To prep this for my JST uh, crimp, I'm going to go ahead and strip this these wires down just a tiny bit. And you don't want to go too long on this. I love these uh, 
These strippers, I've had these for a while. They work really well. They're not very expensive. Let me zoom in a little bit. So that that's, you can see about the lengths you want. And in order to crimp the wires, you're gonna need a couple of these JST XH pins. You can kind of see what they look like here. And the next step is to set your JST pin in this. I usually use the 1.4 setting for the small part. So if you look at this pin, there's a there's kind of a wide wider part in the middle, and then there's a smaller part. The wider part in the middle is going to crimp into your wire. The longer part here, but thinner, is going to crimp into the jacket of your wire. So you want to make sure your wire is not too long. And I just fit them right up in here, and then you want to push it all the way forward into the pin. You don't want to push it down yet, but you want to just set it in there. I'm going to go ahead and try to crimp it. I'm going to push it all the way in where the jacket is not in the, where it clips down. And then I'm going to squeeze pretty good and make sure that it doesn't move around when I'm crimping it. And that's what a good crimp looks like. Let me zoom in. Hopefully you can see that okay. So that's pretty good. So now that's just the wire part and then you, you want to make sure it doesn't wiggle around. Well, for the jacket part, I pretty much do the same thing except I use the 1.9 setting which is all the way towards the end. And before you put this in, sometimes you might have to just pinch it together a little bit. Now these are really small wires, so and these JSTs accommodate larger wires, so this crimp's probably not going to be as looking as good, but we'll see what we can get it to. Alright, so I'll go ahead and just lightly, you don't want to put as much pressure on this one. You just want it to hold it in place. It's not perfect, but I'm going to crimp it just a little bit more. The main goal here is you need to be able to fit into the JST, which uh, that should be no problem. And now I'm just going to repeat for the other pin or the other wire here. If you really want to make that wire jacket crimp nice, you can trim these down just a tiny bit, but I, I'm not going to bother. It's not that important. So I'll go ahead and crimp the second one. Looks good. Yeah, I did a better job this time. So let me show you that. So you can kind of see what that crimp should look like. This other one's a little ugly, but it, it's good enough. Okay, now I've got my JST XH connector, and I'm going to go ahead and put these, insert these in. Make sure that the little tab goes into the slot. So, and these, the polarity on these does not matter. So you can put them in whichever way you want. As long as they fit in there, you're good. Which mine do, or at least that one did. And the ugly one did as well. So now I'm just going to reinstall my bed. I've got it upside down here, which is fine. I might be able to get it installed like I took it off. Just make sure that you're, as you do this, that you're just watching how your wires go through. But we'll go ahead and connect those up here in a second after I get it all wired or uh, connected again. I've actually found this way is pretty easy. Something else that's interesting on these beds is that you can see there's a slot for adjustment. So if you ever need to move your bed forward, you have a couple millimeters there, which is pretty handy. So I'll go ahead and just install it upside down like this. I, I think it's actually easier to install this way. And remember, this hump has to go towards the bed, the hump on the plastic part. I'm going to tighten these up just a little bit to hold it stiff. I'm not worried about the level of the bed at this point. just want to make sure it's not flopping around too much. I'm going to go ahead and connect the JST. doesn't really matter which one you pick. I'm going to do the inside one. They only go in a certain way. There we go. Okay, that one's now connected. And then I'm going to connect these. These don't matter either, as long as you just don't mix them. Got to get it all the way in there. Okay. And make sure those are tight. They should not come out easily. All right, I think we're pretty good there. Now we need to run. So the next thing we're going to be doing is getting the wiring so we can channel it through our wire chain. Now when you're considering wiring for a cable chain, this stuff here is PTFE wiring and it's really your best bet to use. Um, it's really slippery and it's not gonna bind up, but not everybody has access to that, but if you do, this is what you wanna use. All right, I've got my PTFE wire for my bed. Um, I've got this wire that's uh, for the NeoPixel and then I've got some other PTF wire that kind of goes with the theme. Um, and this is going to be for my thermistor.
I am going to go ahead and crimp on JST connectors to either ends of these. And now the JSTs are connected, or crimped, so I'm going to go ahead and put a JST cover on this. And as long as they fit, you're golden. And you don't want them slipping out, so do the wiggle test. They shouldn't move. They don't. So now I will go ahead and plug into my bed. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged everything into the Wagos and the connector here for my uh, my Kirigami bed. And now I've got to run all of this mess through the cable chain. Okay, I went ahead and added zip ties here, 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 and here to prep it before we go into the cable chain, which is going to be connected right here. Now I've rotated this around a little bit, and I need to basically get the wires here channeled through this. It is going to be a little bit of a tight squeeze, but I think I can make it. And I was able to get all those tucked through. I ended up using this tool just to kind of push them into place. So everything is in there now. Make sure you don't have any stray wires that aren't in, and you should be good to move on. Now we've got to cram the wires through the cable chain, and make sure that you put this on correctly. So it's pretty easy to figure out. Um, you, this end needs to snap into the top, and then the other end needs to snap into the bottom. So you should only have one way you can do it, but don't get it backwards. So you want this way, this to bend towards the bed. So this is the top of the bed here, and then this is the bottom. And it should bend like that, kind of like a upside down J. Normal cable chains, you'd be able to open it up, just lay it in and be done and move on. But these you actually have to route through. I've got the wires taped and I'm just kind of routing them through. And I'll show you the end here, what it looks like once it's through. So I just kind of taped everything up at the end and pushed, forced it through that way. And before we do the final connection, just make sure that all of your wires are nice and are pulled, nice and taut. You don't want anything looping around. I've maneuvered the wire, the cable chain clip right on top of it. And we're just going to have to find the sweet spot to snap it in. It may take a little bit of work here. It's going to be a little easier to maneuver on a side like this. You want to make sure both these are connected. There we go. Okay. So I had the satisfying snap. Now that's all good. Now I'm just going to run these wires through this bottom one. Same thing, really. This one should be pretty easy to do. And then I'll just pull them through. That seems to be the right length though. But you can always add or remove links. These are pretty easy to mess with if you need to. One thing that I did notice is it seems like it's, this is the same process, but you have to squeeze it into place on this one. There we go, that one actually went in easier. So that should straighten it out. And let's take a look at it. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Um, the cable chain can flex all the way to the top, so that's what really what you're looking for. And if you're running a V02 style cable chain, it'll actually connect in a different spot, and I think that's probably a little, it's going to look a little better. Um, this one isn't bad, but it's the V02 is really designed more with the cable chain mounted down here, but this will be fine. It's a good idea to check your bend radius all the way down. I think mine's fine. I went all the way to the bottom. Just another point, you want your cable chain, regardless of the bed you're using, you don't want it going above this the top of this extrusion here. So mine is definitely under it. But if you're going above it, you're going to have problems with the gantry hitting it, and the manual calls that out. 